This here is an NVIDIA GPU. It's an old one. Actually, I don't think it was ever even used. I took this from the NVIDIA HQ, uh, a tour that we did there a few years ago. Uh, they allowed us to bring one of these samples home just as a memento of sorts. And I've kept it for a rainy day. And today is that day, folks. I want to use this to more or less explain the topic of today's video. And that is baking graphics cards and other components like them to essentially reflow them and get them working again. Because when all else fails, right? Just bake it. Now this might be news to a few of you, but older tech likes to be a bit stubborn. It's usually because the software ends up, you know, taking off and it leaves the hardware behind. Uh, but when you end up with physical problems that, you know, involve artifacting, maybe you don't get a picture out uh, from a card at all, as was the case in this video that you're seeing here, we uploaded a few weeks ago. I mean, you, you would kind of feel like your back's up against a wall, right? I mean, what else can you do? The card is no longer under warranty why not just bake it or blast it with a heat gun? Now folks in the industry will tell you that what we're about to do in this video is no good. The reason why is because it's usually a very temporary fix. It might work for a day, it might work for a week or a month or even a year, but you're probably gonna have to reflow the card again at some point for reasons we're gonna explain later in this video. I also find that it creates the potential for dishonesty among sellers because if you know that that card has that problem and you've reflowed it in order to get it temporarily working again, I mean, you're passing on that, that issue down the line, right, to a, an unsuspecting buyer, especially if you're not disclosing that this card was fixed this way. And that's why I've been a bit hesitant to talk about this subject on this channel. I don't want to give it more credence. I don't want to, I don't want to give it more attention than it already has, uh, because this is a serious problem. Folks will sell cards on eBay. They'll get the cards. They'll seem fine. Of course, outside the 30-day return window, that's when things go south, and most folks aren't interested in tossing graphics cards into ovens to temporarily fix them. So in this video, we're going to attempt to reflow a couple of cards I've had DOA, not DOA, they've just been sitting dead on desks, and uh, we'll talk about why this isn't a permanent fix and why you might not want to do it unless you have absolutely no other alternative. Are you ready? Stay with me. The Be Quiet PureBase 500DX is an excellent mid-tower optimized for maximum hardware support and performance. With three included 140mm Pure Wings 2 fans along with a perforated front panel, you'll experience some of the best airflow in the business. And subtle RGB accents never hurt anything. Choose between black and white and soak in your build through clear tempered glass. Take it from me, you won't be disappointed. Learn more about the PureBase 500DX from Be Quiet by clicking the link below. So to kick things off, I want to establish a control. We've got this system here that I've used in previous videos. In fact, the one that was dedicated to this broken card here that was artifacting and just plain up not working uh, was tested first in this system. And I want to show you guys that this works. Of course, as is, what we'll do next is swap the card in here, which I think is a 6800 XT out for the first card that we'll work with. And that is this old 7770, again, in that dedicated video. I'll have it linked below if you're interested. But uh, I'll show you that with the card in, it doesn't work, or it does, but it artifacts. And then we'll try the reflow process. We'll just heat it up with a heat gun, and I'll show you how I'm going to approach it. It's not the best way to do it, but given the limited tools I have here, uh, it's, again, what I'll try. And uh, so here we go, we got a post, no issues there, booting into Windows, now let's get the 7770 in here. If I do recall correctly, this card does post briefly, so we do get basic VGA out, but it's when the drivers attempt to kick in, that's when the card just, I think it goes to a black screen, I don't even think we get into Windows, which is unfortunate, but that is the state of things. And if I recall from, it was one of the comments in the video for this card, uh, someone said that what's happening with the basic VGA drivers, the card's running at a very low kind of bare bones voltage, uh, and that's probably why there aren't any symptoms being exhibited at that point. Uh, but once the official drivers do kick in, the card can fully flex its muscles, and that's when issues with the card physically become exacerbated, right? Um, so yeah, it's trying to diagnose the PC because I've had to reset it a few times. I'm trying to get this thing to go beyond just the black screen, but it's not working. So um, that's the state of this card, and we're gonna see if reflow the GPU or the die specifically gets us anywhere beyond this. I'm trying to get into Windows. And one more thing, before we get started, you can see that this uh, restart button here on the automatic repair window should be one solid shade of blue. However, it's two, and we would actually see this extend elsewhere as well. Um, this is just an example of the, the artifacting issue. It's one solid color here in the background, so I think that's why it's hidden. But if we got into the Windows home screen, let's say, you would notice that uh, very apparent artifacting. That was what we saw in the previous video with this card as well that I'm showing you here. 
Uh, so the card is still exhibiting these issues. Uh, it's just a bit worse now that we can't even get into Windows. The screen completely goes black. And it'll be a bit hard to see, but this fan is not spinning. I believe on these cards, it should be. There's no zero stop functionality. So uh, maybe if we can get this reflow to work, the fan will also begin spinning because it is connected. We did check on the PCB side. Now to prep this card for a reflow, we'll need to remove anything that can melt. Uh, we'll be heating this thing up to about 250 degrees Celsius or so. That's about the uh, ideal reflow temperature for for lead-free solder. And that means we're gonna need to remove the plastic shroud here, the fan, of course, which is attached to that, the heat sink underneath only because it's blocking the GPU. Ideally, we'd also want to remove rear IO assemblies. So if we had uh, you know, these connections here, if we wanted to re uh, desolder these and remove them, uh, the back plate itself isn't gonna to be too big an issue, but uh, could damage some of these connections if you get heat in the wrong places. This matters more if you are heating in an oven or something like that, which I don't really recommend. The issue with the heat gun method, which we'll be using, is that you're only heating up a small area of the board and that could cause issues with just the structural integrity of the board uh, when one part of it's extremely hot and the other part's essentially room temperature uh, that could cause warping and other problems with SMDs around the uh, PCB. So again, neither of these is recommended. It's more or less a last ditch resort. I wanna make that very clear again before you see us get into this. Now, thankfully this isn't a super complex card to disassemble, just four Phillips screws here. Uh, they are spring loaded, just keeps the tension in check. So we'll get these four out, and then we should be able to just detach the entire shroud assembly from the PCB. You can see we've already broken the warranty sticker. Actually, when we filmed the original video with this card, this seal had never been broken. So what, a 10-year-old or so card had never been opened. The thermal paste had never been changed. It was actually in decent shape, though, if I recall correctly. So there we go. The PCB and the shroud on this side. We'll detach the fan cable here and we'll clean up this thermal paste next. We don't wanna do this with thermal paste over the die. Oh yeah, you can tell this is super fresh. I had just replaced this in that previous video. Getting this all up here, it's all nice and gunked up. Okie dokie, already looking a lot better. We'll make sure that the area around the die is especially clean. That's where we're gonna focus most of our heat. And the remainder of this IPA should evaporate within a few seconds. There's something about seeing bare, super clean GPs like these on boards. It just um, it just gets me going, folks. I've got to confess. Now the card is propped up on this metal plate. It well, it's a bit rocky. That's only because there's like four hole punches here on the board, and then there's a couple on this side. But it's uh, it's not being held down on this side, so it's all a bit wonky. But uh, should be stable enough for the heat gun. And uh, what I really like about this is that you can move these little feet around wherever you want. They're magnetic, so they're very sturdy with the uh, the base at least. So that's nice. Um, so we've got it propped up and we've got this metal cover on the bottom so it shouldn't uh, harm the desk underneath. You could always put a sheet of metal or something under here or just take it outside, uh, do this on concrete if you're at all concerned. And I'm also gonna use my thermal imaging cam to make sure that we're not overheating this uh, because if you do, the board is pretty much toast. So don't just you know stick your heat gun in one area and keep it there. You'll blow a capacitor or something and you'll have to do a lot more work to fix it. By the way, the heat gun I'm using is an old fashioned Wagner. This is from Home Depot. It's pretty much like the go-to for any cheap heat gun. It works, it still works. I've had it for several years. It has two settings, low and high, which isn't ideal for what we're about to do, but uh, it's better than nothing and it doesn't cost too much. By the way, I use this for all of my custom loop bends as well when we do like hard tubing, so. Yeah, there's that. By the way, I'd say the thermal cam is pretty much required if you're gonna be using the heat gun method because you don't want to overheat. It's a bit easier to stabilize the climate in, a, in an oven of some sort, but uh, yeah. So we're gonna see this through the eyes of the flare imaging camera. Let's see what happens to temperatures. Of course, it's gonna to have to continue calibrating, so we'll have to be careful as we do this. Need to get much hotter than what we're at now. About 90 degrees Celsius. I'm gonna keep changing between high and low speed here just so that we're not uh, cranking temperature up too fast. It's actually a graph while we're doing this that I'll show you of the reflow process with lead-free solder. You don't wanna heat this up too quickly uh, because that, that can you know create a lot of extra stress and uh, potentially damage the components a bit uh, more than they were already damaged. So let's crank up the heat just a tad more. We're gonna try to localize it a bit more now. I'm gonna move a bit closer and lower heat output, we're getting pretty close to the temperature threshold here. This is looking good. We'll try to stay in this area for a few minutes. Uh. All right, and now I'm going to remove the heat and I'm just gonna pulse this for a short while because you don't want temps to, to drop too quickly. 
Again, we're gonna try to follow that chart as best we can here. And you can see doing what we did there, reaching the temperature that we reached, did no physical damage to the board. That's what you're looking for. Obviously, you don't wanna keep cooking things. You don't wanna point heat directly at capacitors, uh, these metal caps that you see on the board. Uh, just, yeah, don't do that. They're probably gonna pop and you'll have bigger problems on your hands. So slowly working this temperature back down. We're about to 100 degrees Celsius now. So we're about halfway there. And one more thing, while we're waiting, what we're doing here is not a guaranteed fix, first off. And this also assumes that the GPU is the problem. This is still quite hot. Um, it, it, it's definitely not the only possibility. And this is another reason why I don't just, I don't just think you should start blasting these cards with hot air, throwing them in, in ovens or what have you. It just doesn't, it's not the, it's not a thing you should jump to first if you're suddenly not getting picture out. Um, it could be a dead short somewhere. Maybe there is a physical problem on the board that I just haven't seen yet. Um, and those are all easier to address, I would say, in some respects. Uh, not everyone can obviously solder, but it is just another possibility. If you decide to just blast this thing with hot air, again, you're kind of creating a problem in that case that didn't already exist. So now you've got something else to worry about down the line. So. This is again, just a very, very last resort, last ditch effort. I'm just jumping through it right away to more or less replicate what a lot of folks tend to do when they don't get picture out. So um, it's, it's getting better now. It is, yeah, it's, it's much cooler. I can actually touch it. So uh, give it a couple more minutes and then we'll try booting this thing up. So now we're gonna fire the system back up with this card reinserted connect it to power. Uh, I'm saying we've got <laughs> maybe a 10% chance that this works. I uh, believe I followed the reflow process as closely as, well, as closely as I reasonably could. Connect HDMI here. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna keep my expectations low. I just wanted to demonstrate how it works, what you could do if you wanted to try it for whatever reason. Let's see, all right, we've still got the post. Now we're looking for boot to windows. <laughs> it actually worked, oh my gosh. I know, I know what's gonna happen from folks watching this. Um, th this is not the ultimate solution, okay? Please do not, <laughs> do not assume that this will fix your graphics card no matter what. In fact, I really didn't expect this to work. Um, I figured it was worth a shot. But uh, we don't even have artifacting on the screen right now. This looks super clean. I kind of want to run a benchmark just to see if we can stress it. Ooh, you know what? I forgot on second thought. This fan doesn't work, so this card will continue to heat up over time. I'm not going to keep the system on much longer. I, I do think that uh, we made our point. So let's talk about what exactly is going on behind the scenes. Why what we just did <laughs> worked, even though I didn't expect it to. Uh, I just want to use this graph here. It's it's pretty rudimentary. I apologize. It's, it's a lower resolution, but it's the best one I could find online without resorting to creating one myself. So uh, you'll see that the die is on top and there's an arrow pointing to what it is specifically. It's that, uh, that blue line there. And underneath that, you've got these R DL bumps and these are basically little balls of solder that connect the die to the package substrate uh, and that underneath uh, is the uh, package ball that's basically these right here there are tons of these on the bottom side of the physical chip and this is what essentially joins the chip to the PCB which is this very bottom layer of green this would be the graphics card for lack of a better phrase so the actual thing you slot into your motherboard now our point of concern is in and around this area here around these RDL bumps these little balls of solder lead free solder in most cases nowadays uh, aren't necessarily the problem it's the areas in and around this solder underneath the die see this blue film is actually comprised of epoxy and epoxy loves to expand and contract after each thermal cycle every time you turn on your graphics card or turn on your PC I should say and your graphics card heats up and then cools back down right that's a thermal cycle the more games you play the longer the card is running uh, in between these sessions it can exacerbate this problem now in the short term it shouldn't be a problem if it's designed correctly but you can imagine how after five or ten years enough swelling and contracting can allow moisture and other things inside, which can then dislodge these bumps from the substrate underneath. That creates the issues that we are seeing with this card. And when we heat up this area with our heat gun to, again, around 230 degrees Celsius or so, that is the optimal reflow temperature for lead-free solder, we're helping to complete these circuits once again from the expanded epoxy underneath. That heat is also helping to evaporate all of
all of that pre-existing moisture in the epoxy, but the problem is when the epoxy gets this hot again, uh, that's when it becomes more, it becomes more gooey and it becomes more prone in the long run to reabsorb moisture, which is why you'll end up having to do this over and over typically. Uh, if this say lasts six months, we might have to do this again, and then it might only last three months, and then maybe a month after that, and then maybe a couple of weeks. By that point, you're reflowing every freaking time you turn your PC on, and that just, it's not feasible. So that's why these reflows are only touted in the industry as being temporary fixes most of the time. It's because, you know, your card might work today, and that's great. I mean, you're better off than you were five minutes ago, but you're not sure of how much longer that will last before you need to repeat this process all over again. And then those increments of needing to reflow begin to shrink over time because that epoxy becomes more and more compromised. That's why I personally don't recommend you do this unless you just have no other way out. So I've been in and around the OS for a good while. You can see things are so smooth. I mean, compare it to this, which is what we we're dealing with originally with this card before we did the reflow, it's very clear that what we've done has uh, at least temporarily fixed things. I am trying to install the Heaven Benchmark. I've actually got a uh, an outside case fan uh, rigged pretty close to the card. I'm gonna check card temps here in a second. But uh, it seems to be holding up so far. And when we run this benchmark, we'll really know for sure if what we've done allows this card to fully flex its muscles. Now I was able to get AMD drivers for the 7770 fully installed, which is something we definitely couldn't do in the original video. So again, we're already on the right foot and I've got Unigen Heaven benchmark here loaded up. We're just gonna run on 1080p medium pass, no anti-aliasing. I just wanna see if the card can handle it or if it craps itself when put under any sustained load. So uh, kind of crossing my fingers here. I'm not too sure how well this will go. But it looks to be doing fine. Somewhere around 50 FPS. I can't really see, it's off to the right. But uh, this is playable. You, like, you can actually game with this card now. Now for how long, that's the big question but it seems to be doing all right so far. You can see our super jank case fan here is pointed in the general direction of the card. And I think it's doing a decent enough job because we're still running heaven after a couple minutes and we're still at the same frame rate we were before. So if there is throttling, it's pretty minor. Not that these cards get very hot anyway, but uh, if we wanted to use this card long-term or as long as it would allow us. Okay, that, oh wow. Really, while I'm filming, the fan just kicks in. What on earth? It should not be doing that. I think it's getting too hot. And for whatever reason, that fan for the first time that I've ever seen just turned on and it got super loud. I'm not sure if the mic picked it up. But that's kind of sketchy. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this. At least we know that what we did well, fix the artifacting. Well, wow, that is um, pretty fantastic news. The, the big question now is how long this will last, but we got a lot further than I expected. Uh, so I owe it to you guys in the comments for even suggesting it. I, again, it, it's something I've, I've been hesitating to show on camera. I don't recommend you just blast your graphics card with heat, especially you know heat from a heat gun. You get up to 250, 300 degrees Celsius or more. It's, it's not, yeah, it, it's just not the, the way to do it. But if you're desperate and you need picture back and you think that's to blame, there you go. I mean, it is what it is and that's why folks recommend it. Uh, we need to move on to card number two now. And this one is a bit dusty. It's been sitting on my desk for several, several months. This is a GTX 1060. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the shroud for this. At least I don't think I do. So we're just gonna have to run the card bare. The thing is though, I don't think this sends a picture out at all. At any point, we don't even get a post to the BIOS. Uh, so, I mean, any picture at this point from this thing is going to be a win. And because we only need to have the card on for a few seconds, it shouldn't overheat even without any cooler attached. Do as I say, not as I do. Don't do this. So first things first, we're going to get the 1060 connected just so we have a starting point. We'll see if anything happens on screen. Ooh, okay. So before we even turn the system on, we do get a LED indicator here by the six pin. It is a lit. So that's... I mean, that's a good start, but as expected, we get no picture, nothing. Just a black screen. This is not what you want to see. Actually, wow, this didn't even get hot. Um, not good. This might be beyond repair, even for the reflow process. We're just going to repeat the exact same process. There's no sense in trying to change anything up because it worked the first time around. And uh, I noticed this thermal paste is a bit, a bit chunky. I've got to be careful here, not just lodge the small SMDs around the die. It will take 
these bits, move them over here, and then we'll give it another once over with IPA before resorting to the heat gun. Now we're gonna stick to the exact same heating over time chart that you saw earlier for lead-free solder. I'm going to, uh, yeah, just attempt to be as much of a copycat as possible. Because again, it worked the first time, so there's no reason why we shouldn't try the exact same thing again. I think I've heated it at the right rate. Right now we're hovering a bit under where we need to pick up the temp just a bit, focusing just on the GPU. Picking up now to around 215C. It's very difficult to keep this temp in that ideal range. Around 220 now, 225. I'm gonna back it up a bit and move a bit closer to pinpoint where we wanna heat up. All right, and it's been enough time. We're gonna back out and allow these temperatures to slowly drop back to room. Just gonna keep flicking this on and off. Make it as gradual as possible so there isn't any sudden shock to the board. The temps are still pretty high. I'm not gonna touch the die, but you can see up at the bottom right, there are a few blemishes. These would not come up with IPA. I'm not sure what those are, if they're surface defects in the die that could affect, uh, of course, the uh, integrity of the card. That could explain why we're not getting a picture out at all, even through VGA drivers for a post. Um, if the odds of the 7770 being fixed by a reflow method were low to begin with, the, this is going to be even lower. I, I, I'm saying less than 5% chance this gets fixed. Just kind of throwing an arbitrary number out there. That doesn't look too good over there. All right, and now I'm just going to connect the card again uh, without a cooler. So don't try this at home. I am not expecting this to work. I'm just going to film this in one take here. and We'll see what happens. Six pin supplemental power connected. Okay, and then we'll get HDMI behind the card. And that is it. Power the system on and cross our fingers. Cross everything we got. Because I, yeah, highly doubt this is gonna work. Whoops. There we go. All right, what do we have here? The light is still on over the PCI connector. Not seeing it. I think we have a bigger issue with this card. So, yeah, I mean, this just goes to show, obviously, it's not gonna fix every graphics card problem out there. Um, yeah, that's a bit disappointing, but I'm, I'm not really surprised. It, you know, if you have nothing else to turn to and you just feel like attempting to reflow, because why not? Um, I mean, yeah, it's fine. I'm not gonna judge you for it but it shouldn't be the first thing that you resort to, especially if you have a warranty. But even if you don't, check everything else first. Go through the proper troubleshooting procedures we've highlighted in our Fixer Flop playlist. Uh, and elsewhere, there's plenty of really great subreddits. There's plenty of uh, just forums in general that have great info from folks who are experienced in these matters. But uh, yeah, the reflow thing is just, you know, it's hit or miss. And even then it's temporary for reasons we already explained. And again, I know it's gonna be a bit difficult to see through this, uh, well, it's essentially two lenses. Uh, the card is a bit hot and that's still, I think, from the, uh, from the reflow that we just did. It's around 46, 47 degrees at the top of the PCB. Uh, but the card is not getting any hotter than that. Uh, no part of the card I could feel the first time around was getting hot uh, while, uh, while supposedly running. So um, yeah, we could have a dead short somewhere. Again, I'd have to probe the heck out of this one to find it. I'm sure it's not going to be anything super obvious, but uh, reflow, yeah, just didn't work here. See, the card still is not heating up too much. Uh, we're around 50 degrees max now on this uh, this thing. I mean, if without a cooler at all, we should be way, way hotter than this already. And yeah, just seconds out of the system, the die, I mean, I can touch it with my bare hands. It's not hot. Shouldn't be like this. So hopefully um, you were at least somewhat entertained by this one. I certainly was, but I did learn a thing or two as well. I learned actually several things uh, just through the research leading up to the creation of this video. It was fun to experiment with, to try this. This is the first time that I've ever really documented this on the channel and just sheer luck. It happened to work on the first card we tried it with. Again, how long it will last, I do not know. And I know that, you know, 
This isn't my area of expertise. I will be the first to admit that. Um, I did take a few electronics classes in school. Um, it was not something that I really had the attention span for. My, my dad is actually an electrical engineer. He knows a lot more about this than I do. Um, I wish it was something I knew more about because it does seem fun on the surface, but again, the, the few, <laughs> I'll just I'll just say it. The, where I really lost it, and and what is, I forget which electrical circuits class it was or what they called it in school, but uh, I really started losing it at AC current. That was when it just became too much for me. DC was pretty easy, um, relatively speaking, but AC was just nuts. And I was like, yeah, there's no way, <laughs> there's no way I could dive any deeper into this. It just was totally above me. So kudos to to those who have degrees in these fields and, and went the whole, you know, the whole four years or whatever through courses like that. It's just, it's just crazy. Um, I tend to be more on the mechanical side of it. Um, my degree is in petroleum engineering, but uh, it, it overlaps quite a bit with mechanical. Uh, and in hindsight, I wish I had just gotten a mechanical degree because I thought I'd be working in oil fields. And I guess at this point in time with the price of oil being so high, um, it would have paid off. But by the time I graduated, uh, oil prices had leveled out around 50 or 60 bucks a barrel and they weren't hiring uh, quite to the degree that they were when I was enrolled, when I, when I first got enrolled in the university. So the timing was kind of crappy. Um, I should have done more research ahead of time and I probably would have chosen a different, uh, different engineering degree, but I did want to be an engineer. Um, I just was always afraid of the math side of it and I had YouTube to get me through it. Um, that was something that I, I think kind of just implicitly motivated me to want to create my own channel because I saw how, how much it benefited me and I wanted to kind of share stuff that I thought was cool with others. So maybe I could explain it a bit better than the average professor. And, and that's not really saying much. It's, you know, you leave a lot of stuff out when you try to simplify uh, certain topics. But I, I've tried my best on this channel since the day I started it to make topics relatable. And uh, all that to say, I'm sure I left some things out. I'm sure I might've you know, phrased things incorrectly. If I did, and you consider yourself an expert in this field, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section. Uh, anything constructive is welcome. And I think it'll help not only me, but, but others as well who might be interested in reflow processes like these. Um, not ideal again, personally, it's a last ditch effort. And I suppose with this card really had no other choice because it is so old, but um, it can work. It's just, again, a matter of how long it works. That's, that's the big question. Now, if you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. That would be greatly appreciated. If you aren't subscribed yet, what are you doing? Get subscribed, click that red subscribe button. We upload cool videos all the time here on this channel. I'm a bit biased, but yeah. I'll give you a few seconds, by the way. Go ahead and click the button. I'll wait for you. Appreciate it, thanks. Uh, leave any and all comments down below, and I suppose I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks to those who told me to just bake it. That's essentially what we did. And uh, in the last ditch effort, it worked. Do I recommend it? No, 99% of the time I don't. But if you're that 1%, right? Your card's just out of warranty. It's too old. It doesn't work. It doesn't send a picture out or an artifacts like crazy. Maybe blast it with a bit of heat. You never know. I mean, what do you have to lose? The card's already dead, right? I'm gonna get out of here. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.